this is the little part two. Um, I wanted to show you a little uh, shoulder stand practice that I've been doing lately that um, is super calming and um, just beautiful all around. But the thing is, I don't always teach it in classes because um, I find that shoulder stands should be propped. Uh, personally, I have a neck issue where I have to prop it. Um, and so I use quite a few blankets. You'll see here I have four Mexican blankets stacked with the neat edge. That's the, the side that's folded um, facing the back of the mat. And um, you could do it with maybe just two blankets depending on the length of your neck. But the idea is that you have your shoulders on the mat or on the blankets and your neck off of the blankets with your the back of the head on the mat so that you can maintain sort of the natural curve of the cervical spine since you're weight bearing in a shoulder stand on the neck. I think in some cases, you know, of course it's fine to get the full range of motion in the neck, but um, when we're weight bearing, uh, especially if you have any neck issues or, or um, injuries, it's really important to either prop your neck or just be really careful about going too far or putting too much weight because when you come into the full pose um, it's called the candlestick pose because you want um, essentially your your ankles right over your hips right over your shoulders so that's a lot of weight um, if your um, if your neck is in a, in a position that's not it's not happy about so take that into account so you do uh, probably want some props with kind of a neat edge here so that you can um, I'll show you when we get in and then I'm also sitting on a little bolster here because as you come higher with your shoulders and upper body it's nice to have a little landing pad for your bum when you come down so it's not as big of a transition um, so let's go ahead and get started um, if you haven't already done it I posted a just a short little practice um, that would be a good little warm up or maybe a couple of sun salutations before going straight into this, but um, it's also fine to do on its own. Just take it nice and easy. And as I always say, and my mentor Annie says, if it feels like too much, it really is too much. So you're the only one who knows what it feels like in your body. So really take that into account. So having said that, when we come down, you want to check your setup so that your shoulders depending on the width of your shoulder head, which is the top of your shoulder, is um, about an inch or so, or the width of your shoulder behind the edge, so that as you kick your head, your feet over towards a plow pose, um, then you'll be on the top of your shoulder heads, and hopefully your neck won't be on the blanket. Hopefully you can see this from this angle, and because um, you come back slightly when you kick up your feet. So you bring your feet up, you also don't want to turn to the side, so I'm going to stop looking at you. <laughs> and bring your legs up and over. Hopefully your feet can come down, or you can bend your knees a little. If they can't, that's okay, but it makes it a little more difficult. Hands to your low back so that you can walk one shoulder and then the other in towards one another. And then you can even check and see, like, did my full cervical spine come off of the blanket? And are my shoulder heads on the blanket? And then you can interlace your fingers and bring the arms down. That can help you get a little bit higher. And one thing that I never knew is that once you're in a shoulder stand, you're really pushing your shoulders, the tops of your shoulders down into the mat. And that's what gives you that big lift. And so plow pose here also, the hips are over the shoulders rather than in a forward fold like this. So you're working to get those hips up still working to press the shoulders down to get that lift and then inner thighs roll up towards the ceiling to help with that alignment. Then you're going to bring your hands to your upper back and you can either bring one leg and then the other or both legs up towards shoulder stand and it really helps to walk the hands up the back or I guess down the back <laughs> towards your shoulders and again here is where you're pressing into your shoulders. You're also pressing slightly into the back of the head. 
and then you're trying to get the hips over the shoulders and the ankles over the hips. And you want to think about those inner thighs rolling towards the front of the mat and then lifting your tailbone up. Really soften your eyes, your jaw. And it's tempting to once you get in, do sorts of all sorts of leg um, variations. But I'm going to invite you today to just be really still. You might even close your eyes. As you're here a moment, you might be able to walk your hands down a little further. Find again that push of the shoulder heads down into the mat, the back of the head into the mat, to lift the chest up and lift the tailbone up. You might feel that little bit of um, stimulation in the thyroid to the throat. That's on purpose. Um, you could stay here for quite a long time if you're newer to the pose, maybe just a minute or so. So you can come into those long belly breaths, relaxing your belly. And then to come out, we're going to come right back into that plow pose. So you might interlace your hands again and straighten the arms. Take the feet overhead. Again, pressing into the shoulders. So lift the hips. Then we'll take death man's pose. So you'll bend your knees. And you can take the hand, arms around and kind of hug the knees. It's called death man's because the knees come eventually along the side of the ears. I stay with my toes tucked under usually uh, because I'm on blankets. You can also untuck the toes. Sometimes because you're up higher, it's a little more challenging to balance. And then when you're ready to come out, you can bring your hands to the back or just palms alongside you. And now you can come into that more forward fold um, as you come out. This is where it's nice to have that bolster under your hips as you come down and then you can bring your legs all the way down and then you always want to remember to do a little fish pose which night which is nice with blankets because you can do a just a soft fish we like to call it so you slide off the blanket so that the whole shoulder blade is on the floor and then you can walk your legs straight and I like to bring my arms in like a little cactus shape here. You might even walk your shoulder blades down a little bit, away from your ears. Close your eyes. If it's too much on your low back here, you can always bend your knees and lengthen out the low back a little more. And then I always find it's really nice, because in fish pose again, there is this feeling of pressing the skull just slightly into the into the ground or into the mat so that you feel a lift of the cervical spine, which for my body is really nice. I need that lift a little bit more because I don't really have much curve in my cervical spine. You can stay there as long as you want, or you can um, sit upright. You can also roll off to one side if that feels like too much. Take a few moments when you're seated. You can either come into a shavasana from here, um, or sometimes it's nice to do a little happy baby, or even a downward facing dog can be nice to kind of release the neck even more. I hope you enjoyed that little breakdown of shoulder stand series. Namaste.